Welcome to Saving Grace Lutheran Church's YouTube channel here in beautiful Mobile, Alabama. Today we are taking a look at hurricane preparedness as the hurricane season is just about on us. And so let me introduce to you uh, Commander Bob Kaler, retired U.S. Coast Guard Commander. Thank you, sir. I'm not a meteorologist, but my Coast Guard career spanned about 30 years much of it as a helicopter pilot doing search and rescue and law enforcement, and virtually all of it on the Gulf Coast. So I had lots of opportunity to practice planning for, preparing for, responding to, and cleaning up after hurricanes. Uh, now, some of the information that we're going to go through today is specific to Mobile and Baldwin County, but all of the things that we're going to cover are really important anywhere where you might experience a hurricane. Uh, and really, we have a, a great opportunity uh, to have someone that has a lot of experience in that, as Commander Bob was the only helicopter pilot and crew to fly into a hurricane and back out again rescuing 18 people. So we're really, really glad to have you help us out with this, uh, getting prepared for hurricane season. Yes, Hurricane Juan was a uh, very memorable and harrowing experience. But we're not here to talk about Bob, so let's get started. Sounds good. While this poster makes light of the topic, you can bet that these actual hurricane victims from Louisiana were not having a good day. As we anticipate the start of hurricane season, let's review some things that most of you already know about life in hurricane country, and then talk about what to expect from your church. Our congregation has suffered its own hurricane trauma, and that experience seemed to indicate that even people who were longtime residents of hurricane country could stand to think about what their risks are and how to be ready for the storm that will eventually come. Let's look back to August 2005 for just a second. This is Saving Grace as Hurricane Katrina approached. And this is Saving Grace as Hurricane Katrina departed, like matchsticks scattered across the yard. What felt devastating at that moment turned out to not be too bad as far as our building project went. Our contractor gave his guys two days to secure their own property and had them back on the job sorting the good lumber from the bad. A week and a half later, the project looked just like it had before the storm. The fact that there were no roofs, doors, windows, electrical, or plumbing meant that this had been the right time to knock it down. On the other hand, some of our Saving Grace members were deeply affected by the storm. That was really the impetus for our congregation spending some training time on this topic. Hurricane season starts in less than a week. It is officially from June 1st through November 30th, and these highlighted areas are those at highest risk. The official season does not govern the weather. It's just a tool we use by marking it on our calendar. The reality is that weather doesn't care about our calendars. In fact, Hurricane Alice, 1954-1955, and Tropical Storm Zeta, 2005-2006, both spanned New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So we could feel the effects of such storms any day of the year. A good recommendation would be that if you spend any time in any of these highlighted areas, you should make yourself smart about hurricane preparedness. That's our goal. We don't want you to be afraid of hurricanes. We want you to be smart about hurricanes. Did you find 2021's hurricane season dizzying? The 2021 Atlantic hurricane season was the third most active Atlantic hurricane season on record, producing 21 named storms. It was also the second season in a row after 2020 and third overall in which the designated 21 name list of storms was exhausted. It was also the sixth consecutive year in which there was above average tropical cyclone activity. Additionally, with a damage total of more than $80 billion, it was the third costliest season on record between 2005 and 2017. Here are the storm names for this season. I do not have anything to do with naming the storms, so if you see the name of your spouse or son or daughter or granddaughter or a good friend on this list, please don't shoot the messenger. Maybe I should add a disclaimer. 
any resemblance to actual persons is purely coincidental and not the opinion of Saving Grace Lutheran Church or its leadership. Something else to say about storm names is that the list is assembled by an international committee and they're normally reused after six years. If that committee believes that a particular storm was especially memorable because of loss of life or property destruction, they may retire a name. They did so based on 2021's Hurricane Ida. That name has been retired. A number of media outlets have been touting their own forecast for 2022 for several months now, and they can sound pretty convincing. But you may have noticed that they can vary widely. In 2017, the Washington Post said it will be a very light year, just like 2014. And they even used the term hurricane drought. On the opposite extreme, and on the same day, we heard CNN say the year will be a bad year with the whole eastern U.S. deeply affected. So who do you believe? The people who have the best record at predicting tropical weather events have very recently spoken. They are the scientists and graduate students in the Tropical Weather and Climate Research Department at Colorado State University in Fort Collins. Their latest forecast from the 7th of April says, Colorado State University climatologists are predicting an above average Atlantic hurricane season with 19 named storms and nine hurricanes in 2022. They predict that four of those nine will be a major hurricane, a category three or higher. We can all pay attention to this forecast, but you need to plan and prepare regardless of what kind of season they say it'll be. If there were 30 named storms that all stay hundreds of miles from you, you're going to have a good hurricane season. On the other hand, if there's only one single solitary storm and it comes right up your street, you might have a bad hurricane season. This shows the hurricane evacuation zones for Mobile and Baldwin counties. While they look similar, you could note that the two counties don't use the same labeling. Each county makes its own plans. In some cases, there may also be city plans that apply to your location in addition to or instead of county plans. It is important for you to know what zone your house is in. Then you can pay attention to television or radio and understand what they have in mind for you. Something else to think about if you plan to ride out a storm with friends or family is this. Know the risk of the place you're going to in addition to the risk at your own house. You don't want to be like the family that evacuated from Araby, Louisiana to New Orleans East when they found themselves in the path of Katrina, only to have to be rescued when their supposedly safe haven was flooded. Hurricane evacuation zones are determined by risks, real risks based on real history. These two graphics show storm surge heights from Katrina in 2005. It's also good to note that storm surge can easily affect low-lying areas eight miles or more inland from the beach. Note that a new U.S. record storm surge of 32 feet was measured at Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. If any of you are not yet worried about storm surge, then look at this. This is from a rooftop security camera near Chalmette, Louisiana, as Hurricane Katrina came ashore. Note that Chalmette is about 32 miles from the Gulf of Mexico proper, but the entire distance is shallow water and marshy ground, so that the only thing to slow down the water is the levee. Note a straight horizontal line in the water. That is the top of the levee with the water cresting it. You can also see waves in the background. The winds of a hurricane can easily build up 25-foot waves on top of the storm surge. Now back to talking about preparedness or evacuation. Let's do a little math here. The possibility of a 25-foot storm surge and the possibility of a 25-foot wave means that if you live at less than 50 feet of elevation, you will have water in your house someday. So regardless of your own experience or what you hear people say, Beware of your risk if you choose to live at those low elevations. While the water associated with a hurricane creates more danger than the wind, wind is also considered in determining evacuation zones. 
This graphic shows actual wind gusts from Hurricane Michael in 2018. The point is that evacuation zones are well designed based on real experience with previous storm damage. Everyone needs to know the risk at their own home, make their plans, and do their preparations well in advance. Note that the labels of 110 through 150 are building code wind standards and the colors are peak gusts. Hurricane Michael came ashore as a Category 5 storm with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. Wind was what caused the damage to our sister congregation, Amazing Grace, in Panama City four years ago. It was built to 135 mile per hour standard, as many of our homes are here in Mobile. The basic building withstood the wind, but the portico and steeple were just plain gone. That's it for this first video. As we close today, what should you expect from Saving Grace? Well, Pastor Spiegelberg says he or the elders will make it a habit of contacting the members before the storm to find out what each household's plans are and to see if anyone needs any help getting ready. They'll make contact again after the storm passes to ask how everyone fared and again if anyone needs help. To help pastor and the elders know in advance what your plans are, please fill out our online survey form. If you don't have all the answers, then you can leave those spots blank. At the same time, though, let those blanks remind you of things that should be covered in your hurricane plans. If you have any comments or questions on this presentation or suggestions for future presentations, you can send them to SavingGraceXO at gmail.com. Hey, thanks for uh, checking in with us today and watching our video on hurricane preparedness. Uh, we're going to have a, a plenty more coming out as well, so check back on this YouTube channel or on our uh, webpage as well. The next one's going to come up on hurricane safety. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and check out all of our videos either on our YouTube channel or on savinggracemobile.org, not .net, .org. Uh, thanks for tuning in today.